Welcome to Nuclear Chemistry. Let's first discuss the differences between chemical reactions and nuclear reactions. Most of this year we've been studying chemical reactions. They involve transferring electrons, as in ionic, or sharing electrons, such as covalent. But nuclear reactions involve changes in the nucleus of the atom. Only some isotopes of an atom have an unstable nucleus that gives off radiation by itself. Most nuclei are stable. Unstable nuclei spontaneously emit radiation in order to become more stable. And we'll talk about this, these different types of radiation in a few minutes. There are two types of nuclear reactions. There are fission reactions in which one large nucleus breaks apart. A uranium nucleus does this spontaneously and we use uranium in our atomic bombs and our nuclear power plants and we harness that energy. But it's one nucleus breaking into small pieces. Fusion is the other type of nuclear reaction in which two small nuclei come together to make a bigger nucleus. Hydrogen bombs do this and this is where the sun gets its power. Hydrogen in the sun fuses to make helium. Now we're going to talk about nuclear radiation. There are three types of nuclear radiation um, and you need to know each one of these. First there's alpha. What you see here is the Greek letter alpha um, and we can use that symbol but there's also an atomic nuclear symbol and that's the 4 over 2 He that you see here. The He is the element helium because an alpha particle is just a helium nucleus. The 4, if you remember from the beginning of the school year, the top number here is the mass number, so that's the number of protons plus neutrons, and the number at the bottom is the number of protons, just the atomic number. So this helium nucleus has two protons and a mass of four, which means it has two neutrons. Uh, we can shield ourselves from alpha particles with paper. They're fairly big particles. The next type of uh, nuclear radiation are beta particles. This is the Greek letter beta. The symbol that we use for beta, however, is usually an E because beta particles are fast-moving electrons. These fast-moving electrons have zero mass. They're very, very small, and so they practically have no mass. Their charge is negative one, so we put negative one down here where usually we put the number of protons. Uh, beta particles are faster moving, more energetic, and so they can pass through some things, but not through tin foil. The last type is gamma rays. You may remember studying gamma rays um, earlier in the year when we studied electromagnetic radiation. This is the symbol gamma. Gamma has no other symbol because it's just energy. Um, there's no mass and there's no charge to it. Gamma rays pass through a lot of things. Um, we can shield ourselves with lead or concrete. This is an example of a lead apron. So if you go in for x-rays, um, they usually protect the rest of your body from those x-rays with a lead apron. Uh, nuclear power plants often use concrete, uh, very, very thick concrete, to help shield some of the radiation. There are some other types of particles um, that you might see in our nuclear equations. And so this first one is a neutron. A neutron is symbolized with the letter N, has a mass of one, but it has zero charge. The other symbol you might run into is this one. Um, a single proton is just a hydrogen nucleus. So we use the hydrogen symbol. It has a mass of one and a charge of one. Down here you see an example of a nuclear equation. This nuclear equation is a hydrogen atom which has um, some extra neutrons in it. So it has one proton that's the bottom number here, but it has a mass of three, which means it has one proton and two neutrons. It um, breaks apart and emits a beta particle, this electron that we just learned about. It has a mass of zero and a charge of negative one, but it leaves behind something else, 
and this is our unknown leftover particle. To figure out what this leftover particle is, we do a little algebra. If you look just at the mass numbers, you can write an algebraic equation. So this mass of 3 is equal to 0 plus A. A is the symbol for mass number. So we write our little algebra equation, 3 equals 0 plus A, and we solve A equals 3. We do the same thing with the charge, this bottom number, the atomic number. So the atomic number here is 1 equals negative 1 plus Z. This is a little harder. When you write it out, it helps. 1 equals negative 1 plus Z. In order to solve for Z, you actually have to add 1 to both sides to get rid of the negative 1. So Z equals 2. Now to figure out what the symbol of this element is, we look for the atomic number. We look for this atomic number on the periodic table. So if you find element number 2, you'll find that it's helium. And so we use the symbol HE. So this would be 3 over 2 HE as our answer. You're going to get an opportunity to do some of these problems as practice. Please ask questions if you need help along the way.